Hey guys, I am Ryan Christofferson. I'm with the PSIA ASI national team. I'm on the Alpine side and a freestyle specialist. Um, find myself with some extra time right now. I've been working on a personal project, painting a motorcycle. And right now I'm in a spot where I'm watching paint dry more than anything. So we thought it'd be a good opportunity to share a presentation that I was a part of a couple of years ago at National Academy. Um, the presentation was on the five fundamentals and how it applies to other avenues within our industry. Uh, we picked uh, racing, park and pipe, and big mountain. And I thought I would take this time to share the freestyle aspect of that. I uh, hope you guys enjoy this. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, please write them down and save them. And wherever we share this, uh, please shoot us questions. We'd love to start dialogues and see if we can't do some Q&A and get some feedback on some more things like this and how we can keep moving forward. So here we go. So like I said, I'm going to take care of the, the, the five fundamentals and how they apply to, to the park and pipe, to freestyle. And, you know, I mean, this has been a big thing for me uh on the team is you know the, the the fundamentals are fundamental because they still apply in the park and pipe uh and i think a lot of our our membership would um benefit from taking their knowledge and what they already know and seeing ways to apply it to the park and pipe so i think that you know this is a, a good way to kind of start thinking out of the box but also show that you may already know more about park and pipe than you do or you thought you did. Uh, you just haven't thought of it this way. So the nice thing about the fundamentals is it's fundamental. Um, most ways that we utilize um, the fundamentals in the park and pipe are very similar to how we talk about them. Um, there are a couple instances where we do shift from the traditional, this is how we're going to do them. Uh, but the 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 why or the principles behind it still remain uh, and then i've always thought that you know the better you are at skiing in general um, the better you're going to be in those different situations uh, parking pipes steeps bumps firm snow so having better control over these fundamentals uh, will allow you to you know be able to like prosper in these areas so first off jump into the center of mass the ability to direct pressure along the length of the ski uh, we talk about this a lot in traditional alpine skiing we talk about moving forward you know if we're skiing dynamic groom terrain trying to high edge angle type skiing we talk about moving forward at the start of the turn bending the ski from the tip and then as we move through the turn we we kind of shift to bending the ski from the center so that the tail's engaged and gives us that nice round shape uh, probably all drawn this picture in the snow before uh, where we talk about we're moving into the apex of of that turn and jumping is no different you know when I go off a jump I need to send myself into the apex so now instead of it being across the hill a little bit it's now up and in front of me and so i'm still trying to move in that same direction and similar things happen if i don't do that you know like at the start of a turn if i maybe make my my movement a little more up i get a little behind my skis so my skis start to move in front of me rather than moving forward with the skis same thing happens on on a jump i go off the jump if my pop is straight up rather than towards the apex now i'm gonna land on my tail so the goal is very similar in skiing i move forward at the start of the takeoff up to that apex but when i land i want to be able to land on my whole ski i want to be touching down tips and tails at the same time and the nice thing about park and pipe is when you do it right, it feels really smooth. You can tell when you land on your tails. We've all done it. You land on your tails and then you smash your toes right into the front of your boots and you're wishing you would have not done that. So very similar uh, in, as far as jumps go. When we want to maybe shift it a little bit, something that we may not do in our traditional skiing as often, 
uh, when we see some butters out there. And that's when you'll see move forward. Like right now, this is a picture of a nose butter. We're moving forward. So we send our center of mass to the tip of the ski. But instead of allowing it to shift from the tip to the center of the ski, it stays over the center, over the tip of that ski. And that now becomes our balance point. And so similar move, we just alter it so that we stay in the front and we bend. Whereas if we were to do that out on you know, firm groomed snow, we would get kind of a pivot at this top of our turn because our tails aren't engaging. But here, that's the goal. So here's a little of some free ski skiers doing that. I think it's a lot of fun to watch. I mean, for sure it takes talent, uh, a lot of strength to be able to put yourself out there and hold yourself out there. And for anybody that's done it or played with it, the the strength in the hamstrings the the glutes the core the low back so that you're not breaking there um is is an effort and can be strenuous for those of you that watched the x games this year um knuckle huck was an event and you would have seen a lot of butter maneuvers in there just a lot of fun to watch talent and just a unique spin on something that's already a little bit different. Now, one of our other fundamentals, controlling pressure from ski to ski, directing more pressure towards that outside ski. Uh, and I've got this with sliding a box or a rail. And I've comboed this with where we're creating edge angle as well, because in when sliding a box, these two go hand in hand, but very similar. I want to direct more pressure towards that downhill ski. How much pressure will depend on what I'm trying to do. And again, there are some instances where I may be balanced over the back foot, but I'm doing something that I'm trying to create some sort of rotation using my front foot. So, but when we're first learning how to slide a box or a rail, being able to balance over the downhill ski, over the downhill foot is going to be beneficial. Like I said, I controlled it with where's the edge angle coming from, combination of inclination and angulation. Um, the reason I think on a box or a rail these go hand in hand is if we use inclination to create our, our edge angle, we shift our weight to the back foot, right? It's, uh, or our uphill foot. What's unique about this for our purposes is how often do we really spin on a flat ski? You know, I mean, if you think about it, like when I'm skiing, I spend more time focused on how I'm building up an edge angle or how I'm releasing that edge angle, but not how much time am I really spending on a flat ski. And I mean, really, it's it's in that that transition zone, which only makes up a fraction of our turn. Or if we're in the race world or you're on a cat track trying to go fast, then we're we're spending it. But the other thing that's kind of unique about this is um, we're perpendicular to our skis being flat. That's a weird move. You know, so when we're going sideways, we always it's it's instinctive. And that's kind of what we fight as as alpine skiers like trying to learn boxes and rails for the first time is we're so used to having a little bit of an edge because we get resistance and we're also scared of high siding i mean i don't know if anybody's done it i've done it a couple of times where i'm going in for a hockey stop and i catch my downhill edges and the next thing you know i'm lawn darting down the hill and that's not pleasant so um it, it's instinctual to want to have edge and you know, the, the same muscular effort and, you know, thought into how we're building up edge and how we're creating edge going into a turn could be thought put into how do I make a flat ski and how do I keep a ski flat? And so I think that's kind of a, a, a tough one for us um, is being on a flat ski and moving perpendicular to that flatness. But rails and boxes aren't supposed to offer resistance. So if I'm going to move with my skis, they need to be flat. Whereas if I have edge angle and I don't have resistance, now my skis are going to continue to um, 
accelerate away from me while my body's behind them. So something to think about. I've got a couple of videos right here. The first one, first one is somebody not quite doing it right. Uh, you'll see what I want you guys to look for is landing on the uphill foot. So already from the start, got my weight on the inside or the uphill foot, which is putting me back. So my skis are out in front of me already. And you can see it again that they're not, you're not getting the resistance. Skis just continue to accelerate away from us a little bit because we don't get that resistance that we get on snow. Um, now let's look at the edge angle. Where's edge angle coming from on this? And it's coming from inclination, whole bodies, tall, leaning, not a lot of flexion in the ankles, knees, and hips, not giving us the ability to really control that edge angle. So one more time, we're also now on the back foot, but we're also leaning uphill a little bit rather than you know having the flexion in the ankles, knees, and hips to, to try to maintain and manage a ski. And if anybody's tried sliding a box or a rail and it hasn't been successful, it probably looked a lot like that. So hopefully now you have a little something to think about. Now here's a video of a couple, um, some PSIA guys uh, doing this. And what I want you guys to watch for on this first one is look at where their body is in a line to their feet. They're right over the top of both feet, meaning that it's not getting out in front. That weight over the downhill foot. watch this video again and what I want you guys to pay attention to is what are they doing to keep the angle of the skis flat so you'll see it in uh, in their bodies especially as they go they go over um, the kinks or the curves so right here watch the shoulders start to align to that to that rail down the hill and that's allowing them again to keep the skis flat as he goes up and over the round starts and keeps moving so that's not only allowing to keep the skis flat but it's helping keep the body moving with the skis rather than allowing the skis to get out in front of us regulate the magnitude of pressure created through ski snow interaction i thought this would be a good time to include half pipe um Ski and half pipe is a lot like a very high performance, medium radius or GS style turn. Uh, there's a lot of forces that happen in the half pipe. You'll see, you know, I mean, it's, you know, when we're in a, in a dynamic turn, the, the forces that, that we're feeling pulling us to the outside of the turn, uh, the bend of the ski that we're making it, um, take that the the radius of the turn that we're trying to set just a lot of forces on on the skis and on the body same thing happens when you move through the transition zone of the half pipe but now instead of me doing that through my interaction with the snow the actual half pipe the 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 snow surface itself is bending so as I ski over it I am now bending the ski through that transition and we need to manage that. And that's gonna happen as you go up the pipe, as well as when you come back down the pipe from the vertical section into the flat bottom. Those are the two places that people get hit the most as far as where that, that strain, uh, the strain on the body happens. So as we're going up the wall, we want to stay strong, resist, and not allow ourselves to be kind of pulled into that wall. Same thing as when I'm coming back down. I don't want to come through that and buckle into the flat bottoms. I want to stay strong through that area as well. So here's a video of a pretty top athlete skiing some pipe. And you'll notice that 
for the most part, he's landing in a similar place on the pipe, sometimes a little higher, sometimes a little lower, but he's doing a good job of managing those forces. You can see him stay strong through the wall. He's not getting too crumpled. Um, and again, like things to look for is where he's landing back in the pipe. They're all pretty similar, which is allowing him to maintain the flow that he's set up for the pipe. Now here, he kind of didn't manage the pressure with the wall. He kind he kept going. So as he was setting up for his trick, he started his trick a little early and he hadn't managed the rest of that until vert. He kind of quit here. So when he quit in that, that still on his way up and not quite, his, his momentum was still carrying him outside of the pipe. So let's see, we can see that again now that you know he was okay. He still is. Um, he's a uh, he's in architecture school down in San Diego now and he's still a phenomenal skier. He's no longer competing, but uh, he ended up getting second place. That was a warm up run. Uh, he ended up getting second place in this event. So he did walk away from it fine. But as you watch, like here, he stays strong, holds on, doesn't start his trick until he's exiting the lip. Here, just not enough patience, starts it a little early, and that's what takes him out into the top of the deck. Now, this is where we start to get a little weird um, with the... The fundamental, the way it's worded, it may not fit how we need it all the time. So the way we talk about rotation in, in skiing is control the ski's rotation with leg rotation separate from the upper body. That applies in a lot of situations in freestyle. But when I'm going to learn how to spin, that's where I actually need to turn with my upper body. And that's okay. But the, if we think about why we control the the rotation through upper and lower body separation is it so i have an anchor like my upper body is an anchor for me to be able to turn my legs and allow me to change direction when i want to go so when i'm going off a jump my lower body pelvis included now becomes my anchor it stays solid like i want to not change my direction uh, going off on that jump I need to go straight and then I create rotation in my upper body through my spine and then as I so I'll do a little bit of a pre-wind and then I'm gonna turn let's say I'm spinning that way like as soon as my spine realigns now my upper body and my lower body are, are anchored back together and that allows my whole body to move through that rotation um we could take something from snowboard the way snowboard words it is flexion uh so the control the board's pivot through flexion extension and rotation of the body that might be a little bit more beneficial for us in freestyle because it doesn't say that the the upper body has to be separate of the lower body and i mean for me that's fine and as long as we know why we're doing it so you know of a guy and you'll watch as he comes in that the legs stay strong they stay anchored in the direction of travel you're gonna see the upper body right before takeoff does a little bit of a spin one way and then sets his rotation the other way so and then moves the whole body through now it's not a ton of like upper and lower body you know upper body rotation but it is a little bit that allows for us to create spin so here it is again one more time watch how the legs stay strong and stay on target and then watch how the upper body is what's rotating against that lower body that's a cork seven with a tail grab so kind of back to why why I thought this would be a fun presentation. Um, the fundamentals are fundamentals. Like that, that's, doesn't matter what we're doing. They still apply in some way, shape or form. Um, 
when we are a little bit different, like with the rotation, I think that the spirit behind that is still remains. Like I need to be able to rotate against something and that still applies. I'm just trying to turn around in a way that we don't normally when we're on snow and that's okay. But I also think that, you know, the better control you have over these fundamentals, the better you're going to be in the park and pipe. And I think, you know, a lot of people may be nervous to go in there because they think it's new or it's different, but it's really, it's not that different, you know? And I mean, as sure as we progress and it becomes, you know, a, an, an athlete sport where we're doing, you know, the dubs and what you're seeing on the X games and um, yeah, there, there's a lot of things happening different, but they still got to be able to get from, from takeoff to landing, from uh, landing to takeoff. And that, that part's done on the snow. So we still need to be able to ski well. Um, benefits of this, I think, as people go out and explore, one, awareness of your own personal limits. Like I am a big fan of knowing like, what do you know what your range of motion is? Like what your, your effective range of motion is? Do you know, do you know that? Like how, how much can you flex and extend before you start to go into a place that maybe you don't want to go? How far forward can you get? How far back can you get? How far can you turn your legs before your pelvis turns? You know, like, are you aware that freestyle helps you learn that about yourself? It also teaches you about the awareness of the tool. You know, I mean, how far can you push that piece of equipment? Is it soft enough to be able to bend and hang out on the tip? Or is it a, you know, a stiff ski? Is it, and it's, that's hard. That's going to make it that much more challenging. So are you aware of what your, your tool can do? Can you, can you make the skis do this? And then, you know, I mean, that also creates, you now know how far you can push your skis. You know, I mean, I don't know if anybody's ever done it, but if you've been in a race car, you know, that thing is glued to the ground. And then you try to drive that way in your like 79 BMW, that doesn't work. Like it's not the same piece of equipment. Um, and then I also think, you know, the ability to know your limits and the limits of your tool creates adaptability, diversity, and playfulness in skiing. And I think that's really like, for me, that's what I'm after. I, I wanna have fun. I wanna challenge myself in different ways. Um, my guests, when I'm out working with people, they're coming at me with different motivations and goals and my ability to be adaptable or diverse just makes me better for them when I'm out leading a clinic. So, you know, I think there's a lot of, you know, reasons to go in and explore these, these different areas and challenge yourself. But I also bet that you know more or would be better in the park than you may think. So again, thank you guys for hanging out. I, I hope this was, was beneficial for you. I had a good time recording this. My motorcycle fender is probably still not dry yet because this has only been, I don't know, 25 minutes or so. Um, but I hope you guys are coping well and everybody's able to stay busy and please reach out uh, if you have any questions on on any of this content i would love to uh, to create some more of this for for folks or if there's something you're looking for you know i mean we've got a membership full of talented people with a lot of knowledge and i think you know i mean while we're kind of confined to hanging out with people that you chose to live with before this situation then you know we we can put stuff like this together and we can still stay sharp and on top of our game and preparing for next year so hope everybody's doing well stay safe and we'll see you soon thank you